Well, good afternoon. I'd like to welcome everybody to the webinar. Just a couple quick housekeeping notes. We have everybody muted, and we do that just to cut down on some of the background noise. So if you have a question as we go through this over the next 20, 25 minutes, just put those questions in that question area, that dialog box um, off to your right. And when we wrap up here in a little bit, I'll scroll through there and see if I can't answer most of the questions if we have time. Um, and then I'll have all my contact information because I'm sure you want uh, you might have some follow-up questions or if you want to see an actual demo of the e-reference check system um, or information, you know, what, what the pricing looks like. So <clears throat> without uh, any further, I'd just like to say, uh, you know, thanks for uh, taking a few minutes out of your afternoon to listen in. I'm Mike McCarty. I'm one of the co-founders of e-reference check. I'm also uh, the owner and CEO of Safe Hiring Solutions, which is an international background screening firm. Um, we have about 2,600 clients across the United States. Uh, prior to that, I was a detective in Nashville, Tennessee, and um, it did a lot of violence prevention consulting work for the Department of Defense, Homeland Security, and the U.S. Department of Justice. And my uh, partner here on EREF, check. Um, couldn't be here today, but that is Eric Stoffer. Eric is, he's a development. He's got about uh, 20 years of system IT and architecture development for, you know, large Fortune 500 company. He also just recently sold uh, uh, his part of Boland Solutions, which is an international human resource company that focused on 360 appraisals. Um, so, you know, what, what we're talking about here today is, is how do you automate the reference checking process? And we have been looking at this for a couple years now and very labor intensive. You know, a lot of our clients on the safe hiring side were wanting to outsource reference checks. And so, you know, what is happening is there's a they're taking a lot of time, they're very costly, they're very slow, and so we found that most of our clients were not even using the data from a reference check as part of the hiring process. It had basically become more of a checkbox, something that they felt like they should be doing, but it really didn't factor into any decisions they were making before they hired somebody. Because it really uh, was so slow and really eliciting very little information because a lot of company policies now kind of tend toward the name, rank, and serial number, so not giving a lot of data. And so we thought there's got to be a much better way of, of gathering this information for employers or for volunteer organizations. You know, such a critical piece that needs to be part of that volunteer process because if you rely solely on a criminal background check as, you know, a, a method of screening potential volunteers, well, we know from research uh, that about, you know, 80% of sex offenders in the United States do not have a criminal record. And, and what I mean by that is we do a very poor job of developing in our communities, you know, confidence in, you know, victims of crime that they feel comfortable reporting this. So there's extremely low report rates. And so the research has consistently shown over the last 10, 15, 20 years that about 20% of sex offenders in the U.S. have actually been arrested or had some kind of court action. So if you're relying only on that criminal background check to, to weed out, you know, potential violent sexual predators from your volunteer organization, simply um, not going to be enough. And so we, we know that, you know, traditional phone-based reference checks when you're dealing with large volumes of volunteers can be very costly, very time-consuming, very difficult. And so this platform actually allows this to be done automated, uh, quickly, inexpensively, um, so that you can add that extra layer of protection, you know, as a uh, as an employer or volunteer organization. So, you know, it, like I mentioned, it automates the reference checking process. And what I mean by that is really the only work that is really required of you to initiate a reference check is, you know, you will log into the system, which will take you about 15 seconds, and then you're going to enter a name 
and you're going to enter an email address and if you have more than one survey template say you have one for employment or one for certain positions or one for volunteers then you would select the template from a drop down menu and hit complete and that's it you're done you're going to log out of e-reference check and everything else is going to be done automatically so as soon as you save out what it's going to do is it's going to initiate an email to your candidate or to your volunteer and that is going to invite them via a link an explanation email and via a link they will click on that link it'll log them into the back side of the system into your account where they would then enter their references and so once they enter their references and save that then those references are automatically sent an email with you know an explanation it's coming from your volunteer from your candidate so it bypasses those name rank serial number type policies so it comes from your candidate and then the reference has the ability to click on a button to complete the survey or if they decline they can click on a button that declines and when they decline it'll open up a uh, free form box and ask them to provide some feedback why they're declining and once they decline because you will have set up a quorum you basically will say we're going to require you know five references uh, and we would recommend you know at least requiring five references and so when you require that it would drop you under quorum as a candidate if somebody declines so the candidate would get an email and a text alerting them that they've dropped under quorum they need to log back in and they need to add another reference so all of this is is happening automatically it's candidate driven which means that all of this is being uh, sent to the references from the candidate so the candidate is asking for this information not company X or organization Y it's uh, you have the ability to have a candidate self-evaluation so as you we look at a sample report here in a little bit um, you'll see as it aggregates the scoring so when you get a report back it doesn't say reference one Mike McCarty said this it doesn't say reference two. you know Joe Smith said that it aggregates it based on the relationship so if you're an employer and you say hey we want to require five references two of those must be former supervisors then when that information comes back it's aggregated by that relationship so former supervisors are scored peers or social um, acquaintances are scored and if there is a self-evaluation it is scored separately and there's also uh, another tool that we have just uh, integrated into the system and that is the ability for a reference when they complete the survey the last page will ask them if there is anybody else that they would recommend that we should send this um, survey to, to to provide more feedback on the candidate so it really starts to to stretch away from the candidate provided references and then you know more objective references and that would create then a fourth relationship that would be aggregated and scored so that you could measure those different relationships and see how they all rate against each other on these different questions so from the employment stand standpoint the default uh, template for employment these are very configurable competency based surveys you could have as many surveys as you want you could say we have our own and we want to use it or we want you to create one for us but they are based on you know a question a behavior and a competency so the default competency uh, report that uh, that we have has four competencies in it and each competency might have four to five questions so the survey might have anywhere from 16 to 20 questions that the candidate is or that the reference is going to complete one of the key components of this process is it provides reference anonymity and what we mean by that is because the information is aggregated that that reference is is told you know on that initial email invite to complete the survey the reference is told you know that this will be conducted anonymously um, so that they can be honest and not be worried about well if I say that I don't want them coming back on me so it, it creates uh, an environment where we see that references are being a lot more forthright in the information that they're providing 
So how does it work? Well, I've alluded to somewhat how the process works. You've got these email templates. All of them can be edited. So when you look at the language in the templates, they can be edited to say whatever you want them to say. The whole system is like this. It can be color matched to your website. I mean, uh, all of it is completely configurable. So the inv invitations to the candidate to complete can be edited to say whatever you want them to say. The same thing from the candidate to the reference. Um, there's email reminders. So on initial setup, you're going to tell us, you're going to say, hey, Mike, we want this done fast. You know, we want this done within three days. So, um, so we want it set up so when we make a conditional offer and, and we log in and initiate reference checks, when that email goes out to our candidate, we want them to be reminded, you know, twice a day you know, by an email and text, hey, get in here and get your references loaded and get this process started. But we don't want to kind of hound the references that frequently, so what we'll do is we'll set up a default that says we're going to remind those references daily that they need to get in here and complete the survey. And it'll also go out as an email and it also will go out as a text. And the reason we add the text is because, you know, we're all busy people and there's times I'm reading an email and I'll kind of minimize it and think about it and, and make a mental note to come back and uh, respond to that email. And the next thing I know I'm sitting at one of my children's, you know, sports function or school function and I think, oh my gosh, I forgot to answer that email. Uh, or I just completely forget about it. And now all of a sudden, uh, we're going to add this text component. So now all of a sudden, you might get a text message. And e-reference check, the, the reference part of it is, uh, is being mobile optimized, which means that the reference will be able to complete this on a smartphone. So, you know, they could be setting it a sports function and, you know, and as they're waiting on the game to start, they can complete the reference check while they're setting there. So, so all of that process on initial setup is how it automates everything from the invites to the reminders. There's a daily digest that comes back to the, you know, users. So your, you know, staff gets kind of a coffee, you know, digest each morning that gives them a status update for everything in the system. The candidates also get a, a digest via email and a text alert, you know, to alert them, hey, you know, we've got Mike and John have completed, but you got two other references that haven't responded. So it kind of, you know, puts a little bit of pressure on your candidates then to be nudging their references along to kind of speed the process. So all of that churns without any effort on your part. You can control how many and type of references, you know, former supervisors, peer, the self-evaluation, the recommended by a reference. You control the number. Uh, you control quorum. And what I mean by that is you can say, we have a requested number of references we would like. Um, say maybe we would like six references. Um, but we will accept four references after 72 hours. So we can set that up in the system so that you're asking for six and maybe four respond within 72 hours. And so quorum is met and as soon as it hits that 72 mark, it completes it out and would send that report um, you know, back to your staff. This is kind of what the screen looks like for initiating an e-reference check. It can also be integrated into your software platform. So if you're using some kind of human resource information system, if you're using an applicant tracking system, if you're using some kind of volunteer church-based or volunteer management uh, system, this can be integrated within that platform. Uh, and I say that as long as your software provider is willing to you know, provide a little assistance. Uh, it's a very simple integration. So it could be controlled within, you know, your human resource or volunteer management system um, if you would opt to do that. And this step would be eliminated. But right now, if you do it manually, you're simply going to log into, you know, e-reference check. You're going to get a pop-up that says add a new candidate. You got an email, a first name, a last name, and you'll select the setup template if you have more than one template and then you'll save and you're out of there. This is kind of the email invitation template, the default template. As you notice, you know, David Stretton in, in this example is the 
uh, candidate. And so it's coming from David. It's going to William, who is the reference. It explains the process. It provides a, uh, or I'm sorry, William is the candidate and explains to William what this process it looks like and to access the referencing website and enter his references. And if he can't do it via the link, then we've, you know, included the, the URL that he can cut and paste so that he logs in and enters his reference information. Once he enters that in, and, and when he hits that screen, it basically, if you say we want five references, two former supervisors, three peers, then when he logs in, the first two are going to be former supervisors that he fills in, and then there'll be three data fields uh, where he adds the information on the uh, social or peer relationships. And as he completes each one of those, the red um, kind of uh, uh, explanation mark to the left will turn to a green light until all of his references have been entered. It'll pop up a box that says, uh, you know, ready to send this. He hits save. And this email then is generated to his references that explains what's going on um, and click on a link to complete the survey or they click on a link to decline. If at this point they decline, it takes them under quorum, email text goes back to your candidate and alerts them that they need to log in and add another reference. This is kind of what a competency-based survey looks like that, uh, that the reference is going to receive. So it doesn't break it down and explain that here's four questions under a competency called integrity. It basically will have about 16 questions. And based on how uh, the, the you know, reference responds, then that's how it aggregates that scoring in the final report we'll look at in just a second. And if you notice here, this is kind of a, a standard you know, six-point Likert scale, uh, five-point Likert scale. Uh, people are very adamant about using a scale that they really like. And so, you know, the, you know people that love a five-point Likert scale, that is an option we use on setup. If you say we like a six-point Likert scale, six-point basically meaning we don't offer a neutral category. Five-point, we would have a neutral category. You choose that on initial setup, and that's how uh, we would set this up. And quite honestly, each one of your, if you had multiple surveys, you could, you could use five-point or six-point on any and mix and match if you would choose to. But we've created this so that it works for whatever your model looks like. So let me pull open this sample report just to show you what a report looks like. This is a full-blown report and as you get a completed report these reports could be automatically emailed to your staff or we can email an alert that tells you to log into the system to retrieve it and when you log in you've got basically three options when you click on like this example Mary Alexander. You can look at a uh, an abbreviated report uh, you can look at a full-blown completed report. You can look at it as, as PDF or an HTML, you know, on the website. So you control how much information you want to see. We've got clients that say, I want to see everything. I want to see all 16 pages. We have some clients that have said, you know what, we make a hiring decision based on your page three right here, the overall summary. And so really that's all we want to see, the overall summary and the distribution on that page. Or we have others that say, we want to see all of the aggregated scoring, but we don't want to see any of the distribution. It's too much to look at. You can pick and choose how you want this report to look and what information you want to see. So the second page is just really a guide that, that just explains how you read the report. And then the first page, or the third page here, but the first page in the, the data aggregation, this is an overall summary. So as you can see on the top, you've got three bars. The dark blue is former supervisors. The green is former colleague. And the tan is a self uh, uh, re reported survey by the candidate. And so you can visually look at that and see how the supervisor and how the colleague and how the, the candidate um, scored themselves overall by completing this survey. The bottom is the overall resp re response distribution. So you can look at that and determine uh, the importance here, I think, is determining, you know, just looking at the scoring, sometimes that could be skewed even if you knew that you had, 
you know, three former colleagues that had completed the reference, maybe they opt out of one or two questions and only one person responded to that question. So you might want to take a look at that distribution just to make sure that a low score isn't being skewed by uh, low participation on, on a certain question. The second part of the report really looks at a competency summary. So in this default uh, report, we have four competencies, interpersonal skills, performance, problem solving, values, and integrity. And so you can look at that scoring for those particular competencies, and then again, the competency response distribution. And then the next part of the report breaks down each individual competency so that you see each and every question inside that competency and how those relationships to the candidate or the candidate him or herself responded to each one of those questions. So it just really pairs the information down as you go through it. And then there's an overall distribution that you can see on each question so you know what those response rates look like. And then the final part of the report, uh, typically not in Latin, but since this is a sample report, uh, uh, it does have a bit of Latin here, but this is where you can have free form text questions where you might ask one or two questions um, or if they want to provide any other you know uh, information on the candidate or are there any opportunities you know the candidate would have for continued development. Anything that you would want to ask where they might enter that information in as free form text and then again it 's anonymous it simply is uh, listed under you know the relationship a former supervisor stated a former colleague or you know the individual obviously not a lot of anonymity if the uh, the individual or the candidate uh, made any kind of uh, uh, comments uh, in the report so that's really kind of what the report looks like uh, very simplistic to read and that kind of brings us to the end and I know it's kind of a quick overview of you know kind of what a reference check is how it can work for you how it can automate your process free up your staff to be doing other things it's very inexpensive um, if you would like to see a demo you know you can simply you know send me an email here's my information right here we'll be happy to set up a demo for you and show you what the system looks like you know if you'd like some information on pricing um, you know send me an email right here and I'll get you some information on pricing. Um, otherwise, I'm going to take a break here for just a second. I'm going to open up my dialog box and see if there's any questions. All right, not seeing any questions, so um, I am going to go ahead and end the webinar. You've got my contact information. If you had colleagues or others that are interested, we have recorded this webinar. We'll probably have it up on our website within maybe the next couple of days, um, as well as a copy of the slides. So we thank you for joining us, taking a little bit of time out of your day. And if we can provide any more information for you, don't hesitate to shoot us an email or give us a call. Have a great day. Thanks.